They say as Raymond Wilson reflecting the glory of God. Hey, God loved us so much he gave his only begotten son that we might have eternal life. What a great God we serve and we're proud to be a child of the living God. <clears throat> Run wild for quite a while on the face of this earth, but God brought love into our heart and our mind and our soul. And John 3.16 is a tremendous chapter and verse in chapter 3 of the book of uh, <clears throat> St. John. And it's a tremendous verse that I, I love and I, I read quite often. I think about it. Probably everybody in the world can quote John 3.16. But it's all about the love of God and salvation through the love of God. And I'm proud to be a child of the living God. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so I want to think about those a few words that's in that verse that I might be able to maybe share the gospel with a, a lost and a dying world. Or if you have been saved, maybe it encourage your heart to go back and read. I often go back and just read uh, John 3.16 just to encourage my heart because it's salvation by the love of God. And God provided that love that I might be able to come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I broke it down into a few words that I might be able to understand it maybe just a little better. And so he said, for God. Now, of course, that's a long uh, message. If we take probably hours and hours to preach for God, Elohim and Yahweh and Jehovah and El Shaddai and, and in the beginning God created and so we know that God is alive and well and uh, many gods on the face of this earth little gods and uh, idols and things that people worship but we serve the true and the living God a lot God that's alive and we're able to praise him so we found this to be the council of salvation for God God is the one who created all things and God created the plan of salvation for whosoever will. And so we find here the counsel of God, Trinity of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And it was the love of God that sent His Son, the Lord Jesus, to come to this earth with a great love in His heart for mankind. Holy Spirit must be the one that brings conviction. So the counsel of God came together and it's by the uh, love of God, it's by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, or the blessings of God. And then it's by the breath of the Holy Spirit. So when the counsel of God comes together, they begin to describe to you and I about the counsel of God, what it takes to, for a person to be born in the family of God. And those three things, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, coming together is what makes it possible for you and I to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God. Then he said, so love. That's sort of a command of salvation. Uh, you've got to love God. God loved us and when we were unlovable, but God commended His love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so we find the command of God that God uh, brought for us the mercy of God and the grace of God. And God provided that for us. We all sin for people. We come together. Uh, we're born in sin, the uh, uh, old nature of Adam. And the polluted blood curses on the earth. But God came with pure blood by the power of the Holy Spirit of God that we and I might have salvation and show the command of God is God the Father in the counsel of God. And then the world, God, for God so loved the world. The world is the cause of salvation and that's the depravity of man. And we've all come to that place in life of depravity when we're born. And we've come to that age of accountability, depravity sets in, and then we need somebody to overcome that. The Lord Jesus did that when he went to the cross of Calvary. God so loved the world that he looked at it. He's not talking so much about the world as a planet, but he's talking about mankind. God loved mankind. God created mankind. And God brought a plan of salvation to bring you and I back. And then he gave his only begotten son. That's a cost of salvation. You see, I can't buy salvation. You can't buy salvation. Not enough money to pay for the uh, price of our soul. But it's the price of our soul that God died on that old rugged cross of Calvary to shed his blood to pay my sin debt. 
and shall be redeemed <laughs> by the redeeming blood of the Lamb of God, that God has brought us to this place where we can be born again and born into his family. And so he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever is a choice of salvation, God has given to you and I choice to be born in the family of God. God said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. He said there's none righteous, no, not one. But he said, but God commended his love that we might have eternal life toward us. And then we find that God said if we'd confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, thou, <coughs> excuse me, thou shall be saved. And so it's whosoever will. Uh, and we found in the book of Romans 10, 13, uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I called upon the name of the Lord one night and, and God saved my old wretched soul. And for that I'm ever thankful. He changed my life, changed my going, put my foot on a solid rock and established my going. And then there's believeth in him. That's a confession of salvation. And we confess with our mouth and God will save our soul. It's the only plan that I know that will save you from the pits of hell. Uh, many religions on the face of this earth today, but there's only one plan of salvation. And there's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the light. And there's only one way. You can be born in the family of God and that's through the blood of the Lamb of God. And I think she should not perish. Should not perish means a confirmation of salvation that you and I are now are born in the family of God. I believe in eternal security. I believe the blood of God is sufficient to uh, save my soul. It's sufficient to keep my soul. Uh, and when I had I sinned before God, when I was saved, I was redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God. But now that I have been saved, I have daily sins that I have to come before God. Something we say, something we do, something we hear, and something we see, and something we feel, and, and through the old uh, old nature of this old man, the five senses of mankind, we come short of the glory of God. But when we come before God, we have an atonement for our sins, and that is, uh, we should not perish because we have eternal security. I'm secure in the hands of a loving God. And he said, but have everlasting life. Or you and I are eternal secure. Throughout all eternity, we'll praise him and lift him up. Jesus said before he left this earth, he was placed in a tomb, resurrected after the third day, ascended on the, up into the heavens, and now we find him seated at the right hand of God. Before he went back, he said, I, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me and my Father's house are many mansions. Were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And the angels of God I stood as the disciples, watched Jesus ascend up into the heavens, and he said, Why you men of Galilee stand gazing up? This same Jesus you see going up is coming back in like manner. I believe he's coming back just like the word of God said. One glorious day the Lord's coming. Uh, either through death or through the catching away. We'll leave this old world one day. But God, my soul is secure in the hands of the Lord.